Welcome to part 7 of the films of Paul W.S. Anderson. Resident Evil Apocalypse and Alien vs. Predator came out the same year, in 2004. Afterwards, Anderson shared his attention with the productions of several other films, including DOA, Dead or Alive. Eventually, it seemed he was going to return as the director of the third Resident Evil movie, Extinction, but eventually gave the director's chair to Russell Mulcahy, the director of Highlander. Instead, Anderson turned his focus to a movie which had been almost a decade in the making. As a favor to Roger Corman, who had Anderson's first movie, Shopping, released in the US, Anderson wanted to direct a remake of one of his favorite movies by Corman, the 1977 film Death Race 2000. In order for me to talk about the remake, first I have to talk about the original movie. Death Race 2000 is set in the future where a sport called Death Race takes place. It's a coast-to-coast -coast race with over-the-top drivers in bizarrely themed cars who receive points for driving over pedestrians. This is considered a form of population control and some people even consider it an honor to be driven over. The most successful and popular racer is a man referred to as Frankenstein, played by David Carradine. Supposedly, his face has been horribly distorted by numerous accidents he's been in and, as a result, wears a face mask. However, in actuality, he's just another driver hired to replace the previous Frankenstein when he happens to die in an accident. A resistance group wants to put a stop to the race by kidnapping Frankenstein and his navigator turns out to be working for them. However, Frankenstein outsmarts the resistance group who do manage to take out all the other racers. Frankenstein also becomes romantically involved with his navigator and eventually reveals to her that he plans to murder the President of the United States, who's essentially forced him to take on the role of Frankenstein. Is that a grenade? Hand grenade. The film is cheesy, over the top and schlocky, but therefore really enjoyable. It has an early appearance by Sylvester Stallone as the antagonistic Machine Gun Joe, and despite being a quickly shot B-picture, has fairly competent production values. The remake is a horse of a different color, and on the offset was going to be much different than the finished film. Originally the remake was going to be called Death Race 3000. The race would be a global one instead of just coast to coast, with far more sophisticated cars and weaponry than the original. In addition, Anderson had considered Tom Cruise for the lead role. However, Anderson first planned to do the remake immediately after Soldier, but couldn't due to financial problems, and the directing of Resident Evil and Alien vs. Predator obviously took priority from there on out. When Anderson turned down the director's chair for Extinction, he completely revamped his original concept for the remake, making it more down-to-earth and thus shot with actual cars, making it less special effects heavy and reducing the title to just Death Race. In the film, Jason Statham plays an ex-NASCAR driver, Jensen Ames, who is framed for the murder of his wife. He ends up transferred to the prison run by Warden Hennessy, as it turns out, Hennessy's prison runs the Death Race, an event where convicts race each other with armed cars in a three-day race. Whoever wins five straight races will be granted freedom. The film's opening explains how in the future prisons have been privatized, and so Hennessy earns money for her prison with broadcast subscriptions. The popular champ of the track, Frankenstein, has been killed just as he was about to win his fifth rate and earn his freedom. But since he wore a mask, Ains is able to take his place and race as Frankenstein. Jensen discovers that Frankenstein was betrayed by his co-driver, who later allies herself with Ames to help him get his freedom so that he can be reunited with his infant daughter. Ames figures out that it was Hennessy and her lackeys who framed him, and so starts making plans to first win the race, but upon realizing how Hennessy can manipulate the race to her advantage, starts making escape plans. So Death Race doesn't really adopt the original storyline of Death Race 2000, but does include many references and characters from it. Because of that, the film can't really be considered a remake, but rather a homage to the original. What's interesting is that it's actually much gorier and gritty than the original, but thankfully still has a comedic side. Also, the film makes a much more serious attempt at telling a story than the original film, but this in my view doesn't really make the film any better than the original. Both the original and the remake are worth seeing for different reasons, but now on with the characters. Jason Statham is the main character. He's one of those actors who you'll instantly love or hate because of his iconic delivery. I personally like it. The Frankenstein mask is very different in comparison to the original film, and in my opinion, one of the bigger improvements of the remake. The original Frankenstein is actually voiced by David Carradine in the film's opening scene. 
Ames's pit crew is a fun bunch, basically misfits, who don't get along with the other cliques inside the prison. There's Gunner, Lists, and Coach. List is a weird little geek, and it's not even mentioned why he's in the prison to begin with, but I love it that he actually comes to help Ames when he gets into a fight with another pit crew. Coach is played by Ian McShane, probably my favorite supporting character. One thing you'll notice with this movie is that it covers a lot of prison flick cliches, but does so in a very overly stated way, which is why it comes off as intentionally comical. One of the most tongue-in-cheek elements of the film is that the co-drivers are shipped in from a female prison, and of course all the female prisoners are super hot for the audience's convenience. Ames's co-driver is Case, who betrayed the original Frankenstein, but then joins forces with Jensen to help him. She doesn't get romantically involved with Ames the same way Frankenstein's navigator did in the original film, but she's a likable character. The only other driver to be brought back from the original film is Machine Gun Joe, but unlike Stallone, who played him as a stereotypical Italian mobster, in the remake he's played by Tyrese Gibson. He's the only driver who has male co-pilots. The reason for this is that he has a habit of killing them off in mid-race if he gets angry. However, he also cuts himself for every life he takes. He's easily the most interesting supporting character in the film because of how different he is to Stallone in the original, who was just an immature asshole. I also have to point out Robin Shu's cameo as 14K in the film. It's disturbing seeing Shu entirely bald. But one good thing I can say is that it's also cool to hear him act in his native Cantonese. In my personal opinion, he always sounds much more intense in his native language rather than English. However, his role isn't very extensive, and the big joke is that all through the movie his dialogue is subtitled in English, but when he dies, he just says, Fuck me, and the movie shows the equivalent Chinese symbol. It's an interesting bit part, but I still think his cameo in DOA was funnier. Finally, there's Hennessy, played by Joan Allen. She's probably my favorite villain from any Paul W. S. Anderson film. Outwardly kind and understanding, but in actuality a maleficent, plotting, evil bitch who just wants to blackmail Ames into racing for her. She doesn't give a second thought to having Ames killed off in the race when she starts to suspect that Ames is onto her. When Ames actually does manage to escape, she delivers probably the foulest and simultaneously the most hilarious line spoken by any character in any of Anderson's films. Hey, cocksucker. Fuck with me, and we'll see who shits on the sidewalk. As for the race scenes themselves, I'm glad Anderson decided to shoot the movie with actual cars, because the film looks great. There's a bit of overt camera shaking in a few scenes, but on the overall, the races are easy to follow, and there's thankfully a lot of variety and stuff to look out for in each of them, thanks to the moving plot. I also like the fact that they bothered to explain why the inmates can't just use the weapons on their cars to escape. The pads that the cars have to drive over to use their weapons seem like a very obvious video game reference, but it's not overstated, so I don't mind. The film can be a bit cheesy and over the top, but what else can you expect from a movie called Death Race? I like the fact that it doesn't try too hard to replicate the original and instead tries to do its own thing while simultaneously paying homage to the original. It's bloody, fast-paced, and very entertaining. I give it a good grade of a 3.5 out of 5. It obviously doesn't rise to the same level of seriousness as Anderson's prior films, but it stands out amongst his more entertainment-driven movies. When we come back, we'll conclude this review series with Anderson's return to the Resident Evil franchise.